And in a person's life, in order for healing to be complete, sometimes you have to strip away all the different layers of pain, all the different layers of hurt and sorrow to get to the bottom of the root of the core of the problem. How would, you restrain, how would you strengthen your marriage? Can you give me four questions that would help a person really think deep inside on how to strengthen their relationship first with their spouse? Now, you and I both know that at first it comes from God, strengthen our relationship with God. Then you have to, you, you can't see any offenses. We, we know that, okay? Mm -hmm. we, we understand that. other than starting with the how's your love relationship with God because out of that overflow of that relationship if you were going to talk to a lady and you were going to try to stir her into loving her husband how would you start those questions how is your heart attitude are you walking in forgiveness no how about this what made you fall in love with the person you're in love with Five awesome qualities about the man you love. What made you fall in love? Okay. Name five qualities of your husband that you admire and love. That's not a question. What are the five qualities? I listened to a uh, wonderful series this morning, and I was so excited because I listened to this lady. They they had one. They, well, they didn't win. They, their children had given them dance lessons uh, for a Christmas gift. And the wife was really excited. And this couple's well known, so I won't mention their names. But um, the first lesson, the dance instructor told them that rhythm is a learned behavior. And this lady went, yeah, okay, right. Because she said that her husband had two left feet. Okay. Now about the third lesson, the dance instructor called her to the side and said, you know what the problem is? And she said, yeah, he can't dance. He has no rhythm. And the instructor said, no, the problem is you're trying to lead instead of follow. In these dance lessons, you have to learn to follow. And she said, well, I thought I was following. And the instructor said, no, you're trying to teach him. <laughs> See, oh, that's yeah, yeah. So um, I hope it's okay that I shared that illustration because it just so blessed me that you know, in our relationship with the Lord, sometimes we just need to follow. That's good. So the attacks of the enemy mm -hmm. uh, never cease to amaze me anymore because of the things which I've went through from because of the things which I've suffered. And they in no way, shape, form, or fashion compare to the glory which shall be revealed in us when we see Him. For when we see Him, we will see Him as He is. Yeah. Right now, He wants us to look in that mirror. And when we look in that mirror, if there's any other reflection besides Jesus, there's something wrong. So when you look in that mirror and you see yourself, what do you see? You just see a reflection of Jesus. You see a reflection of Jesus. Uh, one of the uh, four questions of... You know, what, what sparked your, your attention or what got your attention? And uh, one of the four main questions that I like to ask people is, do you believe this is your mate from God? Or some people say, do you believe God brought this person in my life? Is that number, question number one? This is question number two. Oh. Do you believe this mate is from God? What was question number one again? What made you fall in love with this okay. person? Do you believe this mate is from God? Okay, number three. We've had some good lessons uh, in our relationship. Um, there's an excitement that goes, there's a giddiness even that goes um, with, with a new relationship. And what you want to do is you want to capture that excitement 
and you want to reinvent that excitement mm -hmm. to keep that relationship strong. Mm -hmm. If that relationship is not founded upon the Word of God, that's one mark against it. Mm -hmm. If the relationship is started outside God's governing covenant relationship, or if you live together before you get married, then you have soul wounds, mm -hmm. and that's another problem that will... Turtle. It will need to be healed. It will need to be dealt with. Right. Um, so, as God was talking to me and I was asking Him these four questions, and, and I don't think it's a coincidence that many people we know right now are facing difficulties in their marriages and their relationships. Okay. Now, the question I had to God was, um, you know, when, 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 of course, you say, do you believe that this mate is from God? Did God bring this person into your life? Do you believe God ever makes a mistake? Okay, that's question number three. number three. Yeah, do you believe God ever makes a mistake? Do yeah. you believe God ever makes a mistake? The answer is no. <clears throat> I um, I open my home up and I enjoy counseling with different ones on relationship and uh, more than that we open our heart up Amen. you know but but we don't open it up as though we're opening it up to a brother or sister really we open it up as though we're opening it up to the Lord everything that we do right. whatsoever things yes, we do we, we do it as though we do it under the Lord for it is he yeah, that we serve and it's he that we labor for Amen. Um, and, and I was just thinking uh, as God said this to me you know, when you when you get to that hurdle and you have a, a problem in your relationship, you go back and you think about the foundations. You know that 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 God brought about to make that relationship work. Right. And the fourth question that God gave me was, "How did you meet? Ooh, how did you meet? How did you meet, meet. Okay. your mate? Okay. Okay." All right. And all these can be very, uh, they, they will correlate as to, to how strong or, or how weak your relationship foundation is. And this week as I counseled with a young man right here at this table, he was sitting where you were, he was a little, he wasn't as close to me as you are, but um, yeah, he thank you. No, he wasn't within <laughs> touching distance, but um, you know, as I asked this guy these questions, um, I, I ponder my own relationship. I look at things different than most people look at. I want to strengthen my relationship with God first and foremost. And I remember the excitement about being in my prayer closet and God sharing with me how He wanted to bless me with a mate. And um, How long ago? Uh, that was 1996, uh, 1993 when He shared those words with me and I wrote it in a prayer journal. Um and, and you know, people will be people. Yes. God never makes a mistake, but yet God's servants often do. Mm. Um, I, I thought this week as God was revelating to me, I said, you know, persecutions come. The enemy's strong enough. The world is cold and hard enough. But it's a shame that a lot of the offenses have to come through the ones that we love the most, which is the Christian body. And then I understood the pain that was in my Lord and Savior when He looked in front of the temple, in front of the, the huge menorah, and He wept. Wow. And when He went in, in Mark chapter 11, verse 11, and He went in and He observed all things in the temple for the hour was already late, and He departed. Now, when He went back, He turned the money changers over. He looked inside there and said, this is my Father's house of prayer, and they turned it into a den of thieves. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want to get up under a condemnation spirit, and so there's a fine line. I don't want to get up under a judgmental spirit. But I want to be full of the compassion and the conviction the same as my Lord and Savior. 